Australia, an island, a continent and a country. The sixth biggest country in the world, with the largest coastline on Earth. A landmass of over seven and a half million square kilometres. Australia lies at the bottom of the globe, surrounded by the Pacific, Indian and Southern Oceans. Isolated beaches border a landscape vast and varied. From coastal beaches to farming plains, to deserts and snow-capped mountain ranges. Australia is divided into states and territories. Its major cities are contrasted by wide open spaces of central Australia. A big nation with a hot red centre. 85% of Australia's population live within 100 kilometres of its 35,000 kilometre coastline. While this makes imports and exports a whole lot easier, shifting goods from one side of the country to the other relies on another mode of transport entirely. Welcome to trucking across big Australia. There are over half a million trucks on the road in Australia. They cover a distance of nearly 16 billion kilometres every year, delivering three quarters of Australia's domestic freight. They're the lifeblood of the nation, connecting cities, towns and communities, meeting the demands of consumers. But how do they know where to go and what to carry? One Brisbane trucking company faces this challenge on a daily basis. Based on the outskirts of Brisbane, 900 kilometres north of Sydney, Simon National Carriers specialises in transporting just about anything and everything around Australia. So we move up to 10,000 tonne a week, really between capital cities, things like air conditioning and glass and the like. We also take fruit and veg from Brisbane to Darwin every week. We cover something like 30 million k's a year. 30 million kilometres, and they are just one of many transport companies keeping Australia on the move. All of those projects, all of the things the community is building and needing, all of the things the community is wanting to eat and, and uh, use every day, need to be carried by a truck at some point. On any given day we could have um, those 150 trucks are going everywhere. We're covering the whole country, all into the remote areas as well. It's growing. <laughs> we used to have about an average 60, 50, uh, 55 to 60 prime movers. And that was a pretty comfortable sort of fleet to, to look after. About 200 trailers. Uh, it's about 3 to 1 the ratio. But now it's growing from, I think, what, 92 or 93 prime movers and up to 265, 270 trailers. So it's uh, quite huge now. <laughs> Generally a single truck or a single semi-trailer, you can put 42 and a half tonne is the gross carrying vehicle mass. They are big vehicles, that's why it takes skilled operators to drive them. Logistics like this is big business. Business started really, like many businesses, trying to avoid tax. So road taxes existed in Australia and they, they applied except when you were carrying product interstate. And we had a timber and hardware business, so we bought trucks to cut poles, electric light poles in fact, trees in northern New South Wales, and to then take them into western Queensland um, for electric power being run into properties. My first trip to Darwin was probably when I was nine or ten I did a trip to Darwin with my father. Uh, so from Toowoomba to Darwin, something like three and a half thousand kilometres. Dad really just led by giving us opportunities to work in the business. So as kids we were down on the forklifts, uh, helping load, passing, passing freight up and felt and other packing materials up to the guys on the trucks. But I then spent a lot of my school holidays travelling to Darwin and travelling to Melbourne and Sydney uh, to work in our depots over school holidays, learning how to load freight well. And, uh, 
that was my start in the business. A major operation, the depot relies on its people to make it all happen. Simon National Carriers is a very, it's a family business, a large family business, but we are an organisation that really cares for our staff and we do that generally. We have an enormous number of long-term staff. I'm telling you now, if you don't clock off and One of those passionate long-term employees is Ursula, Thank you. who is renowned for her efficiency. Okay, it's my responsibility to book the, the transports and have enough room to travel the freight. All right, then I allow, depending on where it's going, two, three, four working days. Ursula commands the short haul and city runs. Ian, on the other hand, is in charge of long haul routes. One of Ian's regular contracts is a fruit and veg run from Brisbane to Darwin in the top end. This forklift drivers are mad. You give way to them. It all starts here, the Brisbane fruit markets. This is Greg Smith. He's going to load us up, he'll go into the cold room that we walk past it before. Over the next few hours, they'll load 22 tonnes of fruit and vegetables onto each semi trailer. This is our forklift driver, Paul. Oh, hi, Paul. Hi, guys. <laughs> I've never been the Darwin by road, but from what I know, it, it's a rat run. Roads are shit house, trailers copper flogging, trucks copper flogging, so therefore the freight cops are flogging. Even though they're all on airbag suspension, they're going to get bounced around a bit. The ply, the ply just supports it all. You'll see as we go on when I pogo it off, the pogo sticks. You'll see what I mean, it just sort of holds everything in place. When they unload it, it comes out as good as what it goes in. The transport alone is three and a half days, so you got the tra if you don't have the transport right, you know, not only do you have to have the right product, you've got to have the right transport. So if you don't have that organised, um, it, can, it, can, it can be playing with fire. But, so that's sort of why we, we stick with the good guys. Uh, and, you know, you guys, Simon's being one of those, obviously, yeah. As we know, trucks are what keeps Australia going. In terms of transport for Australia, if we don't have it, we can't, we can't get it from spot to spot. You can put it in for me, buddy. Benny, how are you, Jim? Yeah, good buddy, how are you? Like family. He's, on, he's honorary Lebanese, this guy. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah. Uh, just this stuff. It's 8 a.m. With payload in tow, the truck is now ready to leave the markets and begin the mammoth journey to Darwin, three and a half thousand kilometres away. But it's not just a case of jumping in the cab and getting behind the wheel. The drivers must follow a highly specific, predetermined schedule. From the Friday morning markets, the single trailer heads to the Simon Depot at Carroll Park in outer Brisbane. After weighing in, it will travel to Toowoomba where it picks up a second semi-trailer. In Mitchell, it couples with a third trailer, becoming a 110-tonne road train. Continuing through Longreach, McKinley and Mount Isa, the truck crosses the borders, leaving Queensland and entering the hot and humid Northern Territory. Driving throughout the night, it arrives eight hours later in Outback Tennant Creek. The next milestone is Catherine where the road train has now been on the move for 48 hours. A final run through Emerald Springs, and it reaches its destination in Darwin. The road train has travelled almost three and a half thousand kilometres in just two and a half days. Taking on this mammoth journey, two up drivers, Greg and Frank. It'll be their job to make sure the truck arrives safely in Darwin. They get two up with express freight. And it's got to be up there on Monday morning, early, two o'clock at the latest, 2 a.m. Two up means you've got 
two drivers in one truck and the truck never stops. The only reason you would stop that truck is to fuel, to do tyre checks, you know, load restraint checks and what have you, change a driver, away you go again. One drives, one sleeps. When that driver's ready to go to bed, you pull up, you swap drivers, you do a quick load check and you go again. The community has for many years had a, this picture of a truck driver as being a guy in a blue singlet with some shorts and thongs and that's far from reality. Today's truckers are treated more like athletes. Their diet and sleep patterns are tested regularly. Leaving Brisbane, they set off into the night. Simon National Carriers is involved in transporting not only everyday items to ordinary families, but massive equipment to mega projects. Currently, there is a 700 kilometre pipeline project underway in Northern Australia. On the same day fruit and vegetables leave Brisbane for their journey to Darwin, trucks laden with enormous pipes are destined for the Australian Pacific LNG Energy Project. Each pipe weighs up to 10 tonne and is worth between $25,000 and $45,000. Needless to say, it's a delicate operation. Over the next two years, a 700 kilometre network of pipes will be built to transport coal seam gas to an LNG processing facility off Gladstone. There isn't reportedly be enough coal seam gas in Queensland to maintain a city of one million people for 5,000 years. To power a city of one million people for 5,000 years. Coal seam gas is the same as any other gas we use. It's used for cooking and uh, heating in houses. Whilst coal seam gas is different in that it comes out of coal, it is the same commodity at the end of the day compared to conventional gas, which is contained in sandstone much further down under the surface. Coal seam gas to liquefied natural gas is a rapidly expanding industry. Peppered throughout the state of Queensland are coal seam gas reserves. Buried deep within the seams of coal, up to 1,000 metres below ground level, the natural gas is obtained by drilling and extracting gas and groundwater, which flows to the surface via a well. The gas is pumped via pipeline to a processing facility where it is cooled to minus 161 degrees Celsius. This transforms it to a liquid, liquefied natural gas or LNG, which is ready for transporting to international markets. Before any of this can happen though, the project will need a pipeline connecting the CSG reserves to the LNG cooling plant on Curtis Island, about 500 kilometres away. And that's where the trucks come in. By world standards, this is one of the largest projects ever undertaken in Australia. 
we are expecting about 40,000 pipes to come from, uh, to Australia. It's an enormous project. It's the largest project we've handled to date. Australia Pacific LNG is delivering one of the largest coal seam gas to liquefied natural gas projects in the country. The Australia Pacific LNG project is worth $20 billion to develop the coal seam reserves in southern and central Queensland and bring them through here to Curtis Island. Australia's Origin Energy and joint venture partners ConocoPhillips and Sinopec are backing this enormous infrastructure project. The trains will come into the laydown area and uh, we then transport the pipe from the lay down into the stockpiles and then again from the stockpiles out to the right of way. The right of way is where they lay the pipe and, uh, and the pipeline will run from there back to its destination. Um, our job is to transport the pipe to where it needs to be. Trailers we've purchased for the Australia Pacific LNG project are very specialised trailers. The trailers have been built just for this type of project. There are extendable trailers used in Australia, but they are specific to pipelines projects, yes. Our trucks are very important. Um, without them, we, we won't be able to move to the actual areas that are not accessible by rail. There's three pipes to every load. Um, the pipes average 18.2 metres in length and uh, between 7 and 10 tonne in weight. So that's why our trailers are all lightweight trailers. Um, they, were, they were built, designed specifically for that project. The pipes themselves are shipped into Gladstone, then transported by rail to the Calide stockpile just out of Biloela. From here, they're placed onto specially made semi-trailers and hauled to a second stockpile known as the Wandoan Laydown Yard. After Wandoan, they're transported yet again to their final resting place, the pipeline. For the time being, this will be near the town of Miles, about 300 kilometres inland of Brisbane. We travelled 15 million kilometres over the life of this project with vehicle movement. One third to a half is truck movements for moving pipe, for moving people, for moving equipment. So it is a huge amount of logistics. ton of truck and pipe behind him, Kerry has a big responsibility.
today, Kerry's journey ends at the Wondowan Laydown Yard. Yeah, another 295 k's down, about three and a half hours. I live in the out here in paradise, live in the pipe dream. More than 200 kilometres away, the fruit and veg truck has reached Toowoomba. Here, Greg and Frank add another semi-trailer to the load. Not an easy task in the dark. The truck has now become what is known as a road train. In terms of size, the road train is exactly that, a behemoth on the road. It begins its journey as a prime mover, weighing approximately 11 tonne. Attached to this is one semi-trailer, a fridge van for towing from the markets. Also weighing nearly 11 tonne, it can carry twice that in cargo. A second semi-trailer is added into Toowoomba, and then a third in Mitchell. These are connected via dollies which are turntables that enable the truck to turn and carry more weight. The result is a road train type two, a prime mover towing three massive semi-trailers. The total length is now well over 50 meters and the total weight is 110 tons, including more than 60 tons of fresh fruit and vegetables. After hooking up the trailer, the pair continue on into the night. The next time they see daylight, they'll be another 600 kilometres closer to their destination. The boys have been on the move now for nearly nine hours, travelling all night through outback Queensland. With such a large towing capacity, you've got to be able to trust your vehicle. 600 horses, high shift automatic gearbox, I wouldn't do driving anything else with an automatic gearbox. Simon's truck's a satellite track. And we've got our own individual tags that we log on the, the truck with. So they know not only know exactly where you are, but who you are, and what time you've driven. The tracks are satellite tracked. Um, so the guys are actually monitored within our um, freight management systems to see what they're doing, um, to make sure their work diaries match up the records of, of the vehicle's movements. This is basically where our where most of our trucks are here at the moment. That's a list of all our vehicles at the moment, so all the times, the GPS coordinates, and um, the date and time where they are. All our vehicles are fitted with a, a, a tracking device. It records you know, speed, records harsh brakings, it, it, it basically records any um, issues wrong with the motors. But we can go in there, and it gives us all the speeds, so what the speeds are, 
what the speedo reading is. So um, if they're stopping, see they turn the vehicle off, and see what the speedo reading is. Um, it also tracks monitors our fuel usage as well uh, on all our vehicles. Is that set at 90 and that's all you want to do with road trains anyway? In the truck they've got a speed alarm that comes on over 105 kilometres an hour, starts ringing bells and stuff like that, and then they ring, I think it rings through to the driver trainer, well, Uncle Bill will be on the phone here giving you a sir, you know, watch your speed. And yeah, they're, they're really hard on the speed. For now though, there are bigger concerns for Uncle Bill. Unbeknownst to the pair, a drama looms ahead. There's reports of fires up around the uh, Mount Eyes of Cloncurry region. Uh, the fires are out of hand at the moment. The highway's actually shut on the Barclay. So we've got to make a decision what we're going to do with our projects going up, whether to you know, park the guys and risk it being parked up for a period of time and lose time at uh, Cloncurry, or whether we actually go around through Boyer and get the boys up there around past the fires. The bushfire is burning between Mount Isa and the town of Duchess. Already, 150,000 hectares of land has been destroyed and authorities have closed the only highway from Cloncurry. With little option, Bill may have to look for an alternate route. There's been fires there the last couple of weeks, burning, I think, but last week, it, just a few last few days, I think it sort of ramped up a bit and got out of control. And I think they had the roadblock for a couple of... I don't know how long. Yeah, I'll make some phone calls. I'll, um, I'll talk to the local SES up there in the in Queensland Police Services and uh, give me some information and see what they say. With Bill acting as the eyes and ears, the guys must carry on, unsure of what's around the corner. Roads out here are long, continuous stretches. It's kilometres upon kilometres of nothing. So the site of the next town is a welcoming one. The pair head into Longreach, known as the birthplace of the world's second oldest airline, Qantas. Big plane, big boy's toy. It's a relaxed agricultural town where the wide streets are named after bird species. Smack bang in the centre of Queensland, the town provides a rest break for travellers and tourists. It's no picnic for Greg and Frank. They must keep on trucking. Greg's on his second tour of duty, as we call it. Um, no, he's top man. He's a really good man. Um, very easy to get on with because uh, you have to. Uh, it's a long way. Darwin's 3,400 kilometres away, and if you don't get on, it can be a bloody long way. Oh, definitely, yeah. It's a long way if you don't get on with someone. Yeah, it's too far, yeah. Biggest key in two-up driving is finding a team that works. Um, if you're, in a, if you're in a small truck, you know, like, let's face it, they're big trucks, but when there's two people in there, if you're not getting on, there's not a lot of room to get away from the bloke you don't like. <laughs> no, not I mean, Frank, no. no. We're happily married. <laughs> drivers tend to be really independent people. A lot of them are bushies, country characters, really good guys. It's obvious Greg and Frank are great mates. Nonetheless, time on the road can be tedious. 
with some music, audio books, talk to myself. Internally, of course, I don't let it all out. Greg and Frank are clocking up the case in good time. The last stop of the day is the McKinley Roadhouse. They've covered about 1,700 kilometres and are about halfway through their journey. The perfect place for a bite to eat. regulars, they've been coming in for a long time and we get to know them and they're just part of the family. Um, a lot of the truck drivers that come in here we've known for a long time, 30 years plus, and they're very much like family. They always, Frank always has T-bone, Greg always has rum. It never changes. No, they never change. Just pulled up at McKinley, our favourite roadhouse, and we have a, a casual bite and then we'll meander off after we've finished. But they are very conscious of, of eating well. Roadhouse like we are, the trucks, is a dying thing. They just, it's very hard to get a good meal. Same meal next week. Thank okay. you. Yeah. See you next week. See you next week. Okay. Okay. All right. Same meal. Bye. Yep. See you later. Thanks for the wife. See you later. <laughs> With a good feed under their belts, the boys hit the road again. Still no word on the bushfire situation. Only time will tell. Back near the town of Miles, the pipes have arrived at the right of way, the final resting place before digging them into the ground. Here, they are laid on the ground with millimetre precision, a process called stringing. Stringing, it's a pipeline term for stringing pieces of pipe together. In this stringing process, uh, we, we, we hope to, on, on, a, on a daily basis, uh, string out two kilometres of pipe, which will give you an idea of how big the project is. These pipes are extremely heavy. Each one of those pipes that you can see there is about 10 tonnes in weight. We've currently got 35 trucks on site. Um, they're all, the subcontractors are tow operators, um, which means they're towing Simon's trailers. Um, so we own all the trailers. Um, there's three pipes to every load. The Australian Pacific LNG project is a huge project for us. It's over 10,000 trailer movements over 12 months, and the largest project we've done to date. This is one of the biggest pipeline in Australia. Working with people and making really good communication and team, teamwork and uh, we can really accomplish this. 
At all pipe project sites, a high-tech vacuum operated lifter makes for an extremely efficient load and unload. Uh, we also use a system called vacuum lift, where it's a system where you put a, a, vac a pad down on top of a pipe. We use a hydraulic back lift, not the, not the diesel powered motor uh, back lift, it's actually a hydraulic back lift. And you apply a vacuum and that holds the pipe so you can move it around. That has a safety advantage in that you don't have people working close to the pipe. It can actually lift twice its weight of that pipe. It will be another two years before the Australian Pacific LNG project is complete. For these trucks today, this is the end of the road. I've laid pipe all over the world and this is one of the biggest. Ursula, a Brisbane controller, is just that. She controls our fleet, she does it incredibly well. She's a real character, but she manages our drivers and she manages some of our customers as well. She has a great relationship with them, though. I get off the phone and I say a few words. <laughs> Ursula, <laughs> Ursula's one of a kind. Um, the transport industry wouldn't be the same without Ursula. Yeah, <laughs> go away, all right? Just leave me alone. <laughs> People are either suited to handling the operational tasks or they're not. They have to have um, a very thick hide and be able to deal with stress. Ronnie, the thing is, if I don't get the paperwork, it doesn't travel. And all... Truck might break down or a customer rings in with an urgent inquiry and then all of a sudden you're shuffling things around. You, it is stressful. Is it stressful? Um, to describe Ursula as someone that you will always know where you stand with her in no uncertain terms. Um, she is a very, very unique lady. <laughs> it's a good job, it's interesting, the people you meet, and I enjoy what I do here, you know, it's, it's transport. It's a continuous stream of deliveries going in and out of the depot. If you look out the window and you see all that racking, that's taken. It is huge. <laughs> if people want air conditioners before Christmas, they'll get them out of here. Ian has received a call for an urgent load of parts to be delivered to a major automobile manufacturer. Trucky Tim takes delivery of the cargo. Tim's truck is just one of 60 making their way around the city's bustling suburbs. Big sheds, Aussies love them and we've got heaps of them. For Bill, back in the office, stress levels have eased as well. Overnight, rain has dampened the severity of the bushfire. We just had a phone call from the police services up there at uh, Cloncurry. The road is open, no chance of a shutting the road. The fire has died down, all under control now, no chance of any risk. So we're actually going to send the truck straight through to the Mount Isa. Everything's back on time, back on deck, no dramas, no risks, no injuries. No, everything's going good. It's lucky for the boys. They have less than a day's fuel remaining for the fridges before 60 tonne of fruit and vegetables perish. 
Looks like we've got some good news. The rain's put the fires out. We'll be clear to go through. Day breaks in the Northern Territory, the top end of Australia. It's isolated, rugged, and one of the least populated areas on Earth. For the truckies, it means the journey is almost over. It's time to swap drivers again and get back on the road. It's like the open road and the freedom it gives you. Yeah. It's like the wheels turning around. It's beautiful golden rays on the horizon. Different times of year, it's different. It changes all the time. The colours, the sunsets, the sunrises. It's hard to describe. The silence and the solitude is the... The background of Australia is... is it's, it's unbelievable, it's indescribable. They love the Australian outback, just that independence they have in that environment. Some places out there that the, there's nowhere else like it in the world. There really isn't. It can be barren one minute and nothing and uh, boring, and the next minute you're in lush green area or farming areas, and you know from that you'll drive straight into the you know into a city into a metropolitan area. You know uh, that's the beauty of being a truck driver. You get to see all aspects of the country. Veg truck finally arrives in Darwin. It's midnight on Sunday. The road train has travelled almost three and a half thousand kilometres in just over two days. Here, the boys will rest up before loading the truck once again and heading back to Brisbane. Time you get here, you, yeah, you're glad you're here. It has its moments, yeah. It's either like, you either like yeah, it or you don't know, there's no it. in between. <laughs> and we've been yeah. going together. No, we haven't been going no, together. No, well, yeah, not going together, <laughs> travelling together. Get it right. <laughs> Two yeah. up partners yeah. since, what, well, March? Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah that's not that's bad. pretty good.
Hey, he's not bad for an old fella, is he? Yeah, he's the old. <laughs> you are. Oh, well, yeah. <laughs> Fresh fruit and vegetables have reached the shop floor, awaiting eager grocery buyers from around the city. These journeys occur on our roads every moment of every day, keeping Australia alive. For blokes like Greg and Frank, it's all in a day's work. But the impact on people's lives around the country is significant. They are creating Big Australia. Seventy drivers, you employ seventy families, so it's it's not just a driver, it's not a job that you come to work nine to five to work at. It's a it's a lifestyle, and it starts at home with the family. And the biggest thing is, your drivers are your main support. They are the biggest thing. There's, there's no other job like it. I drive road trains, and I'm proud to drive road trains. out in the street knows how difficult this game is. Everyone wants everything now. Without trucks, Australia stops. 